Second game though, I'm assuming since uh, Shikari hates uh, Arena, this Serengeti is Shikari's home map. It is Serengeti, or Arabia style map with uh, scattered wood lines, so it's actually pretty darn tough to full wall. You have this cracked terrain as well, if you put buildings there they will be weaker to um, uh, from uh, from attack from the enemy. So, but um, without further ado, let's just have a quick chat about the civilizations here again, starting with Shikari. Venture Bobo playing the pocket again, yellow color here with Tatar's pocket. Have to go, says Tiger, see you on Tiger, thanks for stopping by. Tatar's for Venture Baba, uh, they get 150 food from the sheep, so the sheep last longer for, uh, for the Tatar's, good eco bonus to have. Uh, not as uh, much of um, giving as much of a head start in the early game for for Tatars, though, uh, considering that uh, there's so much hunt here to be taken anyway. So that uh, sheep bonus is always good to have, but not as good as it could be uh, on other maps. So so we get the ten huntables, eight huntables it seems, and one elephant as well. Lots of food to be taken, even berries, so you level struggle, never struggle for early game food on Serengeti. But Tatar's mobility, best, some of the best cavalchers in the game. Great economy after the new buff as well, with uh, two sheep spawning instantly upon reaching the next age. And should that have been good potential for boom or a sustained feudal age with more scouts and still getting a decent castle age time. Right hand side we have the MVP from the previous match, Knusper Bacon here, opting for Byzantines on the right hand side. Quite likely to go into some kind of... Um, could go into anything because they have a very worst flat x but do you see them more... You could see them going into archers from flank, or a mix of archers and skirmishers as their uh, trash is uh, among the cheapest in the game. Skirmishers and pikemen are so cheap, even camels for... Byzantines. They're classified as a defensive sib, so all of their counter units are cheaper. The buildings have a little bit more hit points as well. So, good choice for the flank there to hold against uh, Magyars, which we will get to later. On the other flank, though, for uh, Shikari, we have Vikings. Fantastic civilization with uh, great economy. Uh, they get uh, wheelbarrow and hand cart instantly as they reach Fuel Age and Cast Age. Usually goes for an infantry style opening or straight archers. And um, and you would have a much easier time sustaining your production and everything with Vikings because you get wheelbarrow instantly. Your farmers work faster, your villagers move faster, and they bring in more resources before they drop it off. So many good bonuses working for them. Not too bad uh, map here either for Mark One with uh, golds in the, in towards their teammate instead of uh, aim towards their. Opposite flank here, which is Para for this one. Para was pocket the previous one, is playing Bulgarian's flank now. Bulgarians get um, infantry line upgrades instantly, so that's something that could be useful if you start making three or four or five militia. They become uh, men arms immediately in the next stage. They also have a unique building in the crep post, costing 350 stone, I think, which you could use to take map control or defensively on your golds and uh, woodlands and whatnot, if you're in need of that as Bulgarians. A cheaper mini castle that can also make the unique unit um, the conic. But uh, the scouts opening just as viable with uh, Bulgarians as well, only lacking a direct eco bonus to begin with, but in the castle age Bulgarians can build town centers for only 50 stone, so they have an indirect eco bonus there with an easier boom. The barracks is going up though, so we are going to see a militia into Man of Arms opening here from Para, I believe. Not viable to go archers with Bulgarians, as their archers never make it past archers, they stay archers for the rest of the whole game. In the pocket position, very, very far away here is Gas Damatic with the Koreans' pocket. Uh, I'm amazed at the civilization picks here. Koreans, very little mobile civ aside from the boar wagons from the castle, could be that's the line of thinking here. But uh, Koreans, you can't really justify making knights or... Uh, well, scouts are just as fine as any, so you could provide scouts here, but... You need to get the Warwagon masses, and even they are rather slow moving around as compared to knights. So I don't really see that as a great option. But it's the Koreans' pocket here, I'm sure they have some ideas. Maybe 
run all the way over to the other pocket and go for a crazy tower rush or something. Who knows? And finally, Nicola PL with the Magyar stun here. Now, Magyars, that's one of my favorite sims for Serengeti. You get the melee attack upgrades instantly through each age, so both men at arms and scouts opening with uh, Magyars are very much viable. We have a 20 pop up here for Nicola PL, so it's definitely going to be the scouts opening. He will need to be on the aggressive uh, side here as well, because there's two very forward goals here, almost uncomfortably close to the hill in the middle here. A hill that could be important later on for as a strategic point of falling back in, uh, and exploiting hill bonuses against enemies when fighting. But we have all the players except Para going up to the Feudal Age here, though there's the Feudal Age for Para as well. Seems like everyone wants to go for scouts or the likes here, maybe could be um, some other approaches. Vikings probably want those scouts will go some kind of infantry instead. And this uh, hunter is just begging to be rushed or hit by men at arms, so let's see how Marco won. Uh, fares with that one. Scouts from pocket is pretty common. Let's see what the green pocket will do. Also, the no, sorry, that's uh, the, the teal pocket. I mean, 60% automated fuel age with 20 pop here. I think Gastamatic must have had some serious idle time here with other players already up with uh, more population here. So, might have uh, had a bit of a rough start. And uh, we have not just one, but double stables here for Rancho Baba. Uh, not your usual go-to, because you'd uh, need uh, lots and lots and lots of food to sustain double stables. But I'll give that Tatars can delay farms for a bit due to those two extra sheep, 300 free food on their TC. So it might be easier sustainable, but still, if you want to go for the double stable scouts, go take all the food you can, take the hunt as well, and... You'd probably need like 20 or fruit or something to sustain both TC production, which is idle right now, and the double stables. So you get the numbers up quicker, but you spend so much fruit on scouts, it's easy to forget that you need to make villagers from the town center as well. Okay. Rancho was certainly expecting the scouts uh, from the enemies here, and um, has some uh, as spearmen out already. Till lost boar to TC. Ah, uh, see, lost villager to boar on the TC. Red is in green. Oh, he's in the base. Uh, that's what you mean. So something has gone down there. That's the spearman as well. What is the men at arms opening? Maybe I see five deaths here. So that's probably the rusher men at arms that went down over there. Into double ranges though, and Knosper Bacon seems to have his build order down there. He has both wood and gold to sustain production after the ranges go up here. We have some men at arms over here as well, or in my case, snowman. It's not just a few, it's five men at arms here from Para and the scout. Finding an opening here, the walls aren't complete for Marco 1 here, and uh, it's off gold, at least on one side here. Mining two golds at the same time here. When Chabau, oh, so he went for the um, TC trick with the boar and lost it. Okay, that's, that's a hurtful start and takes a toll on your economy. Bulgarian men at arms against Vikings double ranges. I'm not sure the, what uh, Para will accomplish here with uh, a huge commitment to men at arms because uh, Marco One is going for the double ranges here with Vikings and should be able to fend this off nicely. Of course, no, not having fletching just yet, so the damage output is limited, but still chases away the men at arms here. Uh, not seeing an immediate follow up here and some very weird walls from Para here. Why not just wall towards the edge of the map? Could be a scouting issue, maybe. Yeah, okay, limited scouting here. Meanwhile, we have some red scouts from uh, no, red. I see yellow scouts. I'm not color. I'm not color blind. Yellow scouts for Rancho Baba in uh, Gastamatic's uh, position here. Twenty-two builders for Gastamatic with a nightmare start. As reference, he lost the boar to the TC, has opted for quite a few farms here to compensate, and uh, but is being severely idled here. 22 villagers, 
It looks like uh, I can see now why um, Serene Mundiri would go for Arena's home map and not <laughs> not uh, not Serenity or other open maps. We have Marco Wong with a decent chunk of scout uh, archers forward here as well. Uh, Fletching is in, no defense, not something you need to stress either. Without Stomatic struggling with everything here, it does have the equal to almost click after cast stage, surprisingly so, but uh, I don't see the Koreans player contributing for a while yet. Archer is now breaking through the palisade walls, panic range going up for Para here. And a defensive tower on the gold, I like that. Depending, taking the back gold and preemptively defending it with the tower, that's a good call. Meanwhile, on the top side, we have quite a chunk of archers for Knusper Bacon as well. Double range production. Look at the army numbers here as well. Mark 1 and Knusper Bacon with a collected 30 archers total. Uh, not only archers, actually, some uh, cheap Byzantine spears in the mix here as well. But I think Knusper Bacon should be focusing on Nikola Piel now, given the damage that Venture Baba has dealt to Gaznamatic here. And the Epipsis is already GG, and I think they have a point. <laughs> uh, it's uh, so much lost here already, so, so far behind the builders here for uh, for Serene Mandiri, and, um, and turning very much towards a. Uh, 2-0 here for Shikari. Manatarms won't contribute much other than be a meat shield and allowing the skirmishers to fire here, but the skirmishers don't have any upgrades and they are severely outnumbered here. Marco 1, 16 military, Para 4. No help to be um, gotten from pocket either because the Korean's pocket, Gaustamatic, is completely incapacitated here. Uh-oh. Are we going to sacrifice ourselves to TC here? No, nah, not really. Okay, let's look at the top side again. It is Shikari on the full offensive here on uh, all sides. It's like a 1v1v1 one -one 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 <laughs> on uh, all three <laughs> here. Not really any team efforts and not really needed either for Shikari here. They're doing fine with uh, hitting one player each here. I think Manchobaba should be too afraid to engage here either. The upgrades are in after all. We have both attack and defense. Could easily slaughter those archers, no problem. I think they're going for a coordinated effort now, though. Lots of damage has been done to Gazdamatic. It's at 24 wielders. Shikari with uh, probably a 20 wielder lead overall by now. And we'll be seeing some coordinated efforts on Nikola PL here now. Panic defensive towers. Some Magyar scouts to defend, but with the spears here from the Byzantines player, the scouts scouts can't even comfortably engage. A bit sloppy or Knusper Bacon to sacrifice one and a half spear to the TC fire there, though, but... Collected numbers here still should do the trick. Lots of lots of idle time for Nicola PL. All the eco idle except, except for a little bit of wood choppers here. Uh, second stable doesn't make much sense either. Although I can see on being on the way to the castle age, the idea is double stable knights here. But look at the food and gold here for Nicola PL. Never going to be able to get to any threatening numbers here for Magyars. So, being the first to cast Lage, Gastomotic right behind actually, but what will they do to follow up? Here's a range, double range. Looks like Gastomotic is going for the crossbow approach from Pocket, and Archer's line unit are so so very immobile in a way that um, uh, it would take you forever to get to the sites you need to go to. <laughs> Marco 1 is also. Happy with the damage done to Para for now. The full walls are limiting, or almost full walls, are limiting more archers attack here, not to mention the tower on the gold. I thought he might well, might be on the way towards the pocket to just keep the pocket out of the game, but Koreans are so immobile anyway, so you don't really need to... <laughs> and you only need to punish them, kind of, and uh, make sure that they can't get to those uh, late game combos of mass warbangans, and that's been done here. Now you could just coordinate your effort on either side. Mencho Baba could come over here, for example, and assist the archers, send the scouts in between the archers, so that uh, that you uh, that the archers will be less subject to attack. Even now, scouts from Mencho Baba would be really helpful here against uh, Peras skirmishers. It's weird Marco isn't in castle already. Yeah, true. Maybe it's... Uh, Ah, the food eco, gold eco, everything is in fine. Seems fine, actually. Just floating 
resources in general, let's say. Marco is Vikings. He, he'll always be floating resources. But he's well on the way to the cast stage, though. 52% now, so... Well, look at the army numbers now, though. 29, 31, and 4. What's the plan from Pocket here? We have crossbows from the Queen's player. At least they, at the very least, they get that defense upgrade instantly. So that's a bit of a help coming here to try and contest Knusper Vacan's armies. But Knusper Vacan, even though lacking both armor upgrades, will have superior numbers to the Pocket player and should be an issue. Mark 1 keeps in consistent archers production and is probably going to get into crossbow anytime. As well, I'd like to see upon Castlage uh, having Marco one adding some uh, forward siege or something uh, to just finish off Para here. Uh, with the elite, uh, with the skirmishers, it's limited the damage you can do with uh, archers only. But once crossbow is in, even feudal age skirmishers aren't that big of a threat. You could almost one shot them with fully upgraded crossbows. Thumb ring even for Marco one here, so he certainly has a great eco setup to sustain whatever needed here. Stable is up, maybe add a few knights against the skirmishers. But I think the plan now is simply to go all the way over to Nicola PL here and maybe help out against the knights. It's a decent engagement here actually for Nicola PL and Gastavatic. But um, here comes a Magnum shot, evening out the odds here, and uh, Nicola PL shouldn't be in the spot to be able to consistently produce knights here from the stables. Actually has food and gold for a few more, but uh, doesn't seem to be queuing any. Korean's crossbows winning engagements uphill here, huh? That's uh, a bit fascinating to see. I would think Nusper Bacon is okay with the trades still, though. Venture Baba is uh, queuing up some units, yes. <laughs> Step Lancers, Knights, no, Cow Watchers. So Venture Baba is going full AR army for pocket here, apparently. Knights and Step Lancers and Cow Watchers here. Cab archers with upgrades, step lancers with some upgrades as well. Yeah, a little bit of everything because why not? Uh, Venture Baba being untouched in the pocket position and the, every pocket's dream, after all. And um, yeah, it's uh, got nicely increasing armor numbers. Look at this 105 castle from Marco One though. <laughs> I just got frustrated after Arena going crazy. Yeah, but that's uh, perfectly allowed in. Uh, Situations when you're obviously in the winning position like this, you could just make anything here and still win the game. Uh, Knusper Bacon's push is at the halt though, but their economy is still has been more or less untouched and numbers increasing here. And uh, overall military count, there's almost no reason for Serena Bandiri to keep playing here because uh, because they're constantly in the losing position here in terms of economy, in terms of. Military size. Here comes some step lancers to raid the gold, maybe. Step lancers, fantastic raiding unit. Look at that. Two or three hits, and they go down just like that. Yeah. And then, surprisingly enough, they die to the elite skirms here, but now we have two mangonels pushing three. Third one on the way and the castle going up, whereas Marco won, uh, went for the fast imp here. It's uh, been making army and uh, delayed that castle H kick, but now it's going to be the first one to imp, and Terra is going to be complete history. Soon. Oh, are we going to see a good Magnetel shot now? Oh! <laughs> bye bye, Skirms. And uh, just like that, Terra is down to 50 military, had maybe around 30 a moment ago. Builder just desperately trying to fight on the Magnals there. One goes down, the Vingers die in the process as well. <laughs> and bada boom indeed. Even Knights can't help against the Magnals here. And Terror resigns. The other side doesn't look too bright either. Knights with almost full upgrades here. And uh, that's it for game two. I yeah, even lost villagers to that shot. <laughs> Skirms go to the L. The L yes. 
Yep, so that's uh, game two between these teams. Could pull up the score first before taking the rest of the stats here. Just to make sure the score shows. Middle three, 65 to 12 for Mark 1 here. Obvious MB MVP in this game. Knusper Bacon not playing as offensively or as uh, beastly like on the arena game, but uh, still more than decent. And uh, economy for Ventro Baba, untouched in the pocket, great boom here, 68 villagers did good work with the scouts early on as well though, so the KD should be mentioned for Ventro Baba here as well. Marco is the Malay gay from uh, last uh, last time, Malay, Malay guy, oof, <laughs> uh, not always easy to speak correctly it seems. So there we have it.